Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at Traders of Carthage by Suzumu Kawasaki, with art by Peter Gifford and Yu Satouchi, published by Z-Man Games. It is a game for 2-4 players and should play in about 30 minutes. The premise of the game is players are traders buying goods at market and trying to ship them to Carthage for a profit. Inside the box you get an instruction booklet, the second smallest game board I've ever seen, 108 cards, 27 in each of the four goods, 48 achievement ships, 12 each for the four goods, a wooden ship for each color of goods, and four wooden score markers and reservation pieces in each of the four player colors. Let's take a closer look at the cards as they do several different things. Cards have a value of 2, 3, or 5 for each of the four goods. This is either used as gold if the cards are in your hand, the price of the good if buying it in the market, or the value of goods if they are being sold. The two cards also have two jars on them, while threes have one jar. Jars come into play to protect your goods from pirates later in the game. To set up the game, shuffle the cards and put them face down on the space next to the farm space on the board. Put five cards from the top of the deck face up next to the market, then three cards face up next to the farm. Place the four boats on Alexandria. Now each player in turn order draws cards, one at a time from the top of the deck into their hand, until their hand has at least eight gold in it. The game is now ready to play. On a player's turn, they may do one of three things. They may place their reservation marker on a card in either the farm or the market for later purchase. Purchasing this card is the only way to get your marker back. They may take a card from the market into their hand to use as gold, or they may buy the market. When buying the market, the player must purchase all of the cards available in the market with gold from their hand by discarding the cards face up onto the discard pile. If a player overpays, no change is given. If a card has a reservation marker of another player on it, it is not available for purchase and is left in the market. The purchased cards then go face up in front of the player who purchased them and is now considered merchandise. Merchandise never goes into a player's hand. Boats of the purchased goods now move along the Mediterranean Sea. Either one space if one card of that good was purchased, or two spaces if two or more cards of that good was purchased. If any boat made it to Carthage at this point, play is interrupted for selling, which I'll talk about in a second. The market now replenishes. To replenish the market, any cards remaining because they were reserved will slide over next to the board. The three cards from the farm go down into the market. Reservation markers stay on their cards. Then the top two cards from the draw deck are also added. Then three more cards are drawn and placed at the farm. If the draw deck is ever empty, simply shuffle the discard pile to form a new one. Now let's take a look at selling. Once a boat gets to Carthage, the goods of that color will sell. If more than one boat gets there, the player whose turn it is decides the selling order. Only merchandise cards, which are the face-up cards in front of a player, are available to sell. If you have goods of that color to sell, you must sell. Here's where things get a little odd. The value of the goods are different for each player, and it is determined by the highest card of that good in their merchandise, plus one for every achievement chip of that good. In this instance, the player's highest good being sold is 3. They have no achievement chips, so the value is 3. Then they sell all of the merchandise of that color for that price. 3 cards at a value of 3 is 9. You then round up to the nearest multiple of 5, in this case that is 10. Then divide by 5, and that's 2. The player then adds 2 of the cards they are selling to their score pile under their score marker. When adding cards to your score pile, use the lowest cards first. The rest are discarded. If you need more cards to score than you are selling, take cards from the top of the draw deck. Each player who sold now gets one achievement chip of that color per color of goods sold, no matter how many of each good they sold. Let's go over that again. First, get the base value from the highest card being sold, plus any achievement chips. Then multiply the number of cards being sold by that value, round up to the nearest multiple of 5, and divide by 5 to find out how many cards are scored. Now any ships on the two spaces between Saranayaka and Carthage are rated. Players have a chance to save their merchandise by discarding either 2s or 3s from their hand of the appropriate color. 2s will protect 2 merchandise cards of their color, and 3s will protect 1 merchandise card of their color. A player doesn't have to save merchandise if they don't want to. Saved merchandise is turned to 90 degrees and is safe until sold even if rated again. Unsaved merchandise is discarded. The boat or boats which made it to Carthage will then be placed back at Alexandria. Boats that were raided return to Saranayaka and play continues. 
Play goes on like this with players buying and selling goods until one player has eight achievement chips. The player with the most cards under their score marker wins. If there is a tie, the win goes to the player with the most achievement chips. If it is still tied, all tied players win. And that's Traders of Carthage. The game is a lot of fun. It definitely gets deeper as you play it more and understand how to manipulate the market and get the most bang for your buck while keeping your goods from being raided. It plays best with two players, but still works nicely with three or four, but things definitely get a lot more chaotic the more players you add. It is very accessible to new players outside of the strange scoring, but the game still offers a nice challenge and space to explore. I gave it a 9 out of 10.